Hey, uh, y'all like my video about the thing inside the thing, so I thought I'd make another video about a pattern I noticed in software. And the pattern I want to talk about today is when you build something, you usually have two choices. You can either take something that does more than what you need and just try to trim it down, or you can build something from scratch that does exactly what you need. We're going to take an example. Uh, a lot of companies use Electron to build their desktop apps and everyone loves to hate that because a few popular Electron apps are known to use too much memory. So Electron in general is associated in people's minds with memory hog. And I hear you, it's a real drag. I got 16 gigabytes of memory on my MacBook Pro and I can't upgrade because the RAM chips are soldered on the thing. So we have to think about the reasons that drive companies to pick Electron to develop their desktop apps. As an end user, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but then again, as an end user, you only see the end product. Uh, you don't see the development that went into the product. You don't see maintenance and iteration cycles that constantly make the product better. So as an end user, you might know that Electron is basically Node.js and Chromium. And you may go, does a fucking browser in my chat client? No wonder it's using all that memory. Because as a user, when you look at our task manager or resource monitor, you often notice that, well, Chrome is using all your RAM, so web browser must be heavy, right? Also, why are they using a browser in the first place? Isn't it complete overkill? It's a chat app, it's not a browser. Well, let's think about what a chat app needs to do. At its core, a chat app needs to let you input text and display that text on the screen. And just those two things, in fact, just text rendering, is already so f***ing hard. Now, in the bad old days, things were simple, sort of. In some parts of the world, for some computer systems, text was mostly just numbers between 0 and 127, and it was all the same size. You could just have a grid of characters as a bitmap, and whenever you need to render some text, you could split the part of the bitmap you need to the screen, and then move to the right at a fixed offset and repeat. So simple. And that's like a tiny, tiny fraction of what text rendering is now in our blessed year 2021. Now we can have text of arbitrary size. And our fonts aren't made of pixels anymore. They're made of curves and stuff. So if you want to be efficient about it, you have to keep around pre-rendered atlases of font characters of different sizes. But there's so many glyphs for you to do that, so maybe you figure out a way to render them on the GPU instead so it's faster. But wait, the user can zoom in and out of the page and it all still needs to look crisp and look would just ruin your get fast quick scheme. Also now, because you want your app to be fast and smooth at all times, you're using a bunch of memory to cache the font atlases and everyone hates you, just like they hate Electron. But that's still not even the start of your troubles. Many fonts aren't monospaced, so you can no longer just move right by a fixed offset every time you render a character. Uh, you can't even take the width of the character. There's a ton of different metrics that let you know exactly how much you should move between two characters. But wait! Now everything looks terrible and janky and pixelated because stuff falls between pixels, so now you have to implement anti-aliasing. But wait, if you do it the naive way with shades of gray or something, it'll look awful compared to other applications because your operating system's font rendering knows, for example, that you're using an LCD screen and it uses that knowledge of the structure of the screen to make that look better with subpixel anti-aliasing. You think we're done? We're so far from done, it's not even funny. There's ligature, it's when two characters love each other very much so they just kind of melt on your screen making a single shape. Wait, did I say two? I meant an arbitrary number of characters. That's right, if you're looking boring old English, things are somewhat simple, but cursive scripts are almost exclusively ligatures. And yet, style can change in the middle of a ligature and that will fuck your shit up big time. And that's not even it, I'm not a text rendering expert by a long shot, but if I found one, Given enough sugar, I'm sure it wouldn't be hard to get them to talk about how f***ing hard it is for an entire 24 hours. But I mean, maybe we can just use a library that does all that for us already, right? Maybe we can just focus on the other parts, the simpler parts, like text inputs. <laughs> you sweet, sweet summer child. Do you think text input is easy? Like, just get some keyboard events, figure out which letter they're for, and just append them to a string? Easy, right? But if you don't have a keyboard, what if the input comes from a soft keyboard that appears on the screen? I'm sure there's libraries for that. Yeah, yeah, sure there are, but now you're no longer getting one character at a time, you're getting entire words. What if your users don't have fingers? Or what if they do, but they're busy driving a car or something? Now you need voice input. You know who supports voice input? Browsers! Except for Firefox and Opera. What if your users aren't typing English, but Chinese, where symbols can have a zillion strokes and there's no keyboards with enough keys to fit all the symbols on there? Then they use an IME, and you need to support that too. If you can even render it, because, oh yeah, I forgot, a bunch of languages don't go from left to right, they go from right to left. 
Now that doesn't seem like much, just change the direction, but supporting it properly is a lot of work. And then maybe you also want spell check because while well, nobody can type properly these days, uh, good luck even coming close to what Microsoft Office 2000 was doing back in the days. But okay, okay, okay. Let's say you've now been working on your app for nine years. You've become an expert in all of the world's languages. You started a feud with free type developers because you have serious disagreements about their font hinting implementation. And you've just, you've just solved all of the above. First off, whoa, congrats. Please take some time off. You are loved. Don't work yourself to death, okay? Just breathe. But also, what's next? Well, it's no fun to chat all by yourself, so you just, you're just gonna need to send information over the internet to and from your servers. And while you don't want just anyone to be able to snoop into the communications of your users, so maybe you want some sort of security, maybe some sort of encryption between the client and the server. Uh, hey, browsers can do that. Uh, that's just in TLS. I've done a whole video about this already. Maybe you need to be able to send a bunch of requests over the same TLS connection so you don't overload your servers and you keep it low latency. Hey, that's just HTTP2. Browsers are like really good at that. And maybe it'd be neat if you could take a look at all the network traffic going from your client to your servers so you could quickly debug any issues that come up. Oh wait, browsers have freaking dev tools that let you look at that and they're just really good. Can you see a pattern here? Maybe your users want to send short videos to each other. Browsers are great at that. Maybe some of your user base can't see. You went through all this trouble rendering text and they can't even see it. So now you have to support screen readers too. You know what supports screen readers? Browsers. Maybe you want to show a notification and play a sound whenever they receive a new message. So now you need some sort of audio library. Browsers have both of that, like native notifications and audio. So maybe you want users to be like really, really secure. So you yet let them log in with some USB key, like a universal second factor. You know what supports that? Browsers. You want me to stop? We got enough? All of these are a lot. The fact that we have all these features in browsers is amazing. So many engineering resources, so much time and expertise and cycles of painstakingly making it better and working around other people's bugs went into making all of that happen. The fact we have several browsers implementing most of these is even more amazing. So when you go look at the install folder of a chat application and go, well, a chat app shouldn't be that large, should it? Maybe you're forgetting all the things a chat app does need, even if it's doing just text. Unless you don't give a shit about anyone who's not an able-bodied person with a US keyboard, then, then it gets easy. But I know, I know, I know, please stop writing that comment that you're in the middle of writing. Amos, no one's suggesting you go and write your own UI framework. They're just saying companies should use native UI frameworks for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, but they're cheap and lazy, so they just use Electron. Okay, 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 fair, cool. What's the native UI framework for Windows? What does it look like? Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Which of the dozen of new platforms that Microsoft has announced in the past decade is it? On Linux, it's even worse. And yeah, sure, okay, just, just pick one per platform, or just pick something like GTK and QD. Those are light, right? Well, now they're not, because they figured out we don't make software the way we used to. We no longer use a waterfall process where we decide all the requirements for an app, then do all the design, and then write all the code, and then we compile it, and boom, it's golden, good for release, and then some maintenance. Uh, now we do quick iterations because the requirements change all the freaking time, even after the app is released to the public. And if you have to wait for a mountain of C++ to compile every time you tune the font size of a button, well, that's not very quick. So GTK wised up and they support a subset of CSS. And QD figured that maybe you don't need the full weight of C++ to make sure a button closes a dialog box, so now you can use JavaScript to do that. And now you have a JavaScript engine in your native UI framework. Can you see a trend here? Listen. You can spend forever arguing about the exact number of bytes some application should take on disk and in RAM. And you can call anyone who isn't as obsessed with that lazy and cheap, or you can just chill. You can rest in the knowledge that you don't know everything, that the simplest of feature is built on a ton of complex systems, and that if you're an English speaker with working fingers, working ears and eyes, most of the system is completely invisible to you. And I'm not saying don't go and try to do better. By all means, please do. But have some fucking humility. If you try, you'll learn a lot. And every time I've tried, I've come back with a greater appreciation for the things we do have. Some stuff is just hard, and it's easy to miss when you don't have to do it yourself. All right, well, that's it for this video. Um, 
I guess that was kind of a rant, but it's something that's been on my mind for a very long time and I just wanted to say something about it. So now I've said something about it and I can chill, just like I said you should. Uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'd like to thank my Patreon subscribers and apologize to them because it's a rant. <laughs> so this got heated. But yeah, thanks for watching and take care and stay awesome.